everyone, Jen here with Next Wave Business Coaching. And today I'm going to talk about the most underutilized tool in the toolbox for entrepreneurs. Okay, so I mentioned an underutilized tool for entrepreneurs. Are you ready for it? Here it is. Time. Yes, I just said time. I know that's kind of like, wah, wah, like not super exciting. I get that. But I feel like it's so important that I am willing to go there and I just so stick with me. So stick with me today. I want to talk about how you can do three things to maximize your time, to maximize your profits, which I think we all agree as entrepreneurs, we're in the business to make money. So here we go, let's dive into this, okay? So let's talk about time. You know, I owned a retail bakery and you know, I'd get up in the morning, I'd go to work and I would have these intentions and ideas of what I wanted to get done for the day. I'm sure many of you do, you, you know, as you head into your businesses, and then all of a sudden, 3 o'clock would roll around and I'd be like, oh, what did I get done? I didn't get that blog written that I needed to write. I didn't do those five reach outs to new corporate clients that I was meaning to do. Why? What happened? You know, a lot of times disruptions, you know, we, when you're an entrepreneur, you're doing everything. You're wearing a lot of hats. So the disruptions happen. And this kept happening over and over and over. And I realized I'm leaving money on the table by allowing the disruptions to manage my time. So I've come up with three things, and so stick with me here. I know this is kind of a heavy, deep conversation, but let's go there. So the first thing is to analyze your time. So, okay, this is the meaty part, and here's, you know, hang with me. So when I say analyze your time, I am going to suggest there's a couple great apps out there. One is called Toggle. It's spelled T-O-G-G-L. The other one's called Harvest. These are apps that you can download on your phone, you can download on your computer. And what you can do is every time you're starting a task, you, you click the timer button, and then when you stop, you click the timer button again and you label it. So if you're working on emails, you would stop and start, say emails. If you're working on blogs, marketing, training employees, whatever you're working on, you're gonna track every little detail. I know that sounds tedious, I get it, but it is such an eye-opening experience. It's been a while since I've done that, and so after this video, I'm, that's gonna encourage me to start it next week. Now, I recommend doing it for two to four weeks because you really wanna see a pattern. You know, there's some things in our businesses that we only do certain times of the year or the month. So I would recommend doing it for two to four weeks. Tedious, I know, but trust me, if you can get in the habit of doing it, you're gonna glean a lot of really good information. The other thing is, if you have some key employees, have them do it with you. I'm gonna give you a little word of caution. Sometimes they can get kind of defensive, like what? Why are you tracking my time? That's very micromanaging, which we don't wanna be micromanagers, but just make sure you share with them why you're doing it. You know, we're looking for ways to be more efficient. We're looking for things that maybe could be outsourced. We just wanna see if there's some tasks that we can take off your plate. So if you lead with that, you might get them more interested in tracking their time. Okay, so we're gonna analyze for two to four weeks. And then after that time period, you're gonna print the reports. These great apps will give you a report. So they're gonna tell you how many hours a day you're spending on certain tasks in your business. And now here's where the meat comes in. This is where the nitty gritty comes in. This is where you're going to rate each thing you do. And you're gonna to wanna to be honest and real with yourself. And I use a five point system. So number one is Action gets me closer to my goal. So what is that? That's like creating content, training an employee, doing some marketing, um, creating you know, action steps for your, for your business. So go through your tasks and anything that falls in that bucket, you're gonna give it a one. Okay, number two, actions that add value to my business. Okay, so adding value. These are your sales calls. These are client conversations. These are picking up the phone or having meetings with potential clients, <clears throat> creating a product. You know, if you own a pie company and you make pies, then this is your baking pie time. So you're going to give those a two. All right, number three, 
is this action increases my business value. So meaning more long-term, like networking, um, asking for referrals, social media, writing blogs, improving systems. These are things that are adding value to the big picture of your business. So we got one is closer to your goal, two is adding value to your business, and three is increasing your overall value. So kind of three, three separate things. And then we got four and five. So number four is this action could be outsourced. So this could be something like bookkeeping. It could also be social media. And so you might find some tasks are gonna get two numbers. Because if you're doing the social media, yes, that's adding value to your business. Um, it's overall increasing the value of your business, but it's also maybe something down the road that can be outsourced. So label those tasks that could be outsourced. If not today, that's okay, but maybe down the road when you have more profits to do so. So give those a four. And then lastly are the, this action serves me very little benefit. It gets a five. This would be scrolling social media or endless amounts of time on email, you know, things like that. Um, Clubhouse, if any of you started using Clubhouse or get on Clubhouse, talk about a vacuum of your time. So, you know, good stuff still has to be done, but really not getting a lot out of it. So that would be a five. Okay, so we're gonna take all our tasks, we're gonna give them a one through five, and then we go to step number two of my process, which is prioritize. So what is your favorite planner? You know, do you have a favorite planner? In fact, I'd love to know, so please share in the comments any kind of favorite planner that you use. You know, I'm a digital person for the big picture, but then I go daily every day with my daily, you know, for daily tasks. So I'm gonna take my planner, and I'm gonna start blocking out time. So the goal is the tasks that are rated one, two, and three, those should take up 80% of your time. So if you're working a 40 hour work week, 80% of 40 hours, okay, I didn't do the math, but anyway, that's how many hours should be spent on one, two, and three. So you're gonna start blocking out crunches of time. I get, we have to be flexible, I get life isn't perfect, but it, by being intentional and paying attention to this, it will help you create these habits that are going to give you a little bit more time. And then I always say know yourself. If you're a morning person, then your go time is in the morning. So schedule those tasks, those one, two, and three tasks that you need to be fresh. You know, the sales calls, the cold calling, the writing, the blogs, things that are going to help you grow your business. Schedule those in the morning. And then, of course, schedule in time for um, your health, you know, take breaks, things like that. Um, you know, use that planner. A lot of times we'll color code the planner, like I like to color code it because it just makes me feel happy to see the colors, and I'm blocking out that time. So now number three is protect the time. It's so amazing to me how we'll, we'll keep a commitment to another person, to a meeting, but if we schedule that we're gonna write a blog, we let other things get in the way. So figure out how to protect that time. Some things for me have been the do not disturb button on my phone. My family loves to Snapchat. We Snapchat each other all day long, which is great, I love it, but there are times, there are hours in my day that I just have to put that aside so I can actually get something done. You know, when I owned the retail bakery, sometimes I would work at a coffee shop because sometimes working from home for me was distracting because I'd see the things that needed to be done around home, and I'd go into my office at work, and that could be distracting. So if there were some really crunch time things that needed my attention, I'd go work in a coffee shop, which I know we've lost that ability, but it's coming back. So figure out how to protect that time. And also choose wisely. Like, you don't have to do every networking group. Pick the one that's gonna give you the most ROI on your time. You know, it's okay to say no. I know that's really hard for us as entrepreneurs. We're so afraid we might lose that client or lose that customer. But unless you're a brain surgeon or you're a cardiologist, chances are they're going to be okay for an hour without you. So, you know, learn to say no, schedule your time, protect your time. And then lastly, you got to give yourself a little bit of a break. So habits take time. Um, they say an average person takes anywhere from 21 to, what is it, 254 days to create a new habit. So... These are, this is all habits. These are all just foundational things for building a business, which I feel is so important and a lot of times overlooked. I feel like as a business owner, we jump in and we want to start marketing and building and reaching out to people and we don't have the solid foundation. So if you can learn now 
and take the time now to really organize and prioritize your time, trust me, it's going to help you build more profit in the long run. So, you know, they say that time management is one of the most important tasks you can do for your, for your bottom line. So I threw a lot of information at you today. Thank you for sticking with me. I actually have a PDF of what we talked about to help you analyze your time better in the, in the tools that I suggested. So if you want a copy of the PDF, um, let me know. Just put in the comments um, time management or time or something, and I'll send you um, the PDF. And then in the meantime, I am here to help. So my goal is to help brick and mortars. I want them to have a clear vision of where they're going and a roadmap of where they're going. And I offer a three hour intensive coaching session, which is a great way if you're feeling stuck or you're kind of um, wondering what to do next or you're looking to you know, diversify your income and add more income to your business, this three hour coaching session could be perfect for you. What we do is we're gonna hammer it out. We're going to analyze what you're, what's going on in your business. We're gonna to brainstorm together on some solutions and then you're gonna walk away with three to five action steps that you can take and implement. And then we're gonna follow up that three hour coaching session with a, in two weeks with a 30 minute follow up. So there's some accountability there so that, to help you take those three to five action steps and implement them. So if that's of interest to you, let me know, reach out to me and we can have a conversation about it. that'd be a good fit. So thanks for sticking with me. I hope these um, tips and tricks help you build your foundation to help you maximize profits in your business.